Hi, we're Laura and Lewis. In this video of our van conversion series, we install the foundation of our interior. We start with framing, move on to insulation, put up the walls, and lay the vinyl floors. It's a lot, so let's roll. Or sit. Whatever you're doing is great. To start, we gave the floor a thorough clean, paying attention to nooks and crannies that we won't be able to access later on. Using a heavy-duty adhesive type sealant, we plugged the drain holes scattered throughout the metal van floor. We used a piece of scrap stainless steel and stuck them down with the sealant to cover the larger holes. Next, we placed 1x2s between the ribs throughout the floor. We didn't want to drill into the floor of the van, so we used the same adhesive as before to glue the 1x2s in place. We made sure to add horizontal supports as well. We guesstimated where the seams of the new plywood floor would land and made sure to add extra wood to be able to secure it. And while we waited for the adhesive to dry, we moved the party outside to make the new plywood subfloor. Luckily, our used van came with the original plywood floor, so we removed it and used it as a template to trace onto three sheets of three quarter inch plywood. Then we got to cutting. Lewis used a circular saw to cut down the sheets of plywood into manageable chunks and also cut any straight lines on the floor template. I used the jigsaw to cut curves and cutouts like the wheel well and the sliding door step. Before the floors go in, we have to put down the insulation. We won't go through all of the insulation options because there is a lot of information out there and everyone has their own flavor when building a van. However, we chose to use Havelock wool because it's non-toxic, natural, and sustainably grown. It's non-itchy and safe to handle without gloves, although we recommend wearing PPE anyway. It's incredibly easy to rip apart with your hands and form the random shapes and sizes you need to fill in. We made sure to layer without squeezing in too much, allowing it to breathe naturally. All the supplies we used are linked down in the description below, so make sure to check that out. Once we filled the first third of the floor with wool, we dropped in the first section of the new plywood floor. We used one and a quarter inch screws to secure the perimeter of the plywood onto the battens. Then we used a piece of one by two as a guide to help drive a few more screws throughout the plywood. We worked on each section at a time, laying down insulation, then the plywood floor on top. We are working our way from the floor up, so we tackled the walls next. We started by screwing 1x2s on the wall support channels using number 8 one and a quarter inch wood to metal screws. We attempted to use a level to help align the 1x2s, but since the car wasn't parked on a level space and the earth isn't flat, we learned that it was useless, so we ended up eyeballing the straightness. We attached 1x2s to each horizontal and vertical channel that we could screw into on the car body. We also guesstimated where the seams of the walls would be and added extra battens there for support later on. Even though we use self-tapping screws, we found that pre-drilling helps a lot because some structural areas are double layered with sheet metal. It was impossible for the screw to pierce through on its own. We took our time here, measuring each cut and chopping it with a miter saw. It was a lot of back and forth.
We drilled pocket holes with a Craig jig at each end of the 1x2s and attached them at perpendicular intersections along the walls and ceilings where there weren't any metal supports we could drill into. On the ceiling, we were able to fit 1x2s on the side face of the metal channels as opposed to the bottom face, giving us an extra inch of headroom. Since the roof slightly curves downward, we used a bandsaw to shape the ends of the 1x2s to follow the curve. It took some time to cut and fit and make sure the bottom of the battens and metal channels were flush. Once we had a decent frame of 1x2s, it was time to cut and prep our wall panels. We took rough measurements inside the van to mark the locations of the 1x2s and other cutouts so we can lay out the shape of the wall panels. Using 8th inch plywood, we measured and cut out notches for the channels on the ceilings and also cut out window holes, leaving about 2 inches extra all around so we could flush trim to size later on. The curve of the walls affect the way the panels lay, so be sure to cut the wall panels with room to spare and cut to fit during the installation. It took three sheets of plywood to cover the wall on the driver's side and about two and a half for the passenger side. We cut each section, then dry fit and trimmed until we got a fit we were happy with. This took quite a bit of time and a lot of trips in and out of the van. When the wall panels had been dry fit, we gave them a few coats of paint. We're going with a gray and wood theme in the interior, so we got a can of Silver Leaf by Valspar to paint the panels. Just before we rolled on the paint, we used a tack cloth to wipe off any lingering dust and particles on the panel. We applied three coats of paint on one side. We're not sure if painting one side will cause issues with warping and wonkiness in the future, but that's for future Laura and Louis to worry about. And in between coats of paint, we worked on installing the wool insulation. We wanted to make sure to have the wall panels ready to be installed as soon as we had the insulation up to avoid sagging. For the most part, we were able to shove the wool behind battens and have them temporarily stay while we installed the walls. Occasionally, we needed extra help keeping the wool up, so we used this handy gadget shared with us by a fellow van builder. It has a sticky base that we attach to the wall and we poke the sheet of insulation through. Then we place a cap on top and it holds in place. Once the cavities were filled with insulation and the paint was dry, we installed the wall panels one by one. We took our time here fitting around the notches and lining up edges for the clean seams. We used 3 quarter inch wood screws to secure the panels onto the battens all throughout the walls. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon below to get updates on all of our van build projects. It really helps our channel grow, and Layla appreciates you helping us out. After the walls were in, it was time to finish up the floors. We bought three boxes of vinyl flooring with underlayment attached and got to work. Starting at one end of the van and working our way one row at a time. Each cutoff at the end of the row would be used as the beginning of the next row. We chose vinyl flooring because it was thin, saving us height inside the van, and also because it's durable and water resistant. It's easy to cut using a circular saw or a jigsaw with a fine tooth blade for the curved cuts. Once we finished laying down the floors, we called it done. This means we can move on from the boring foundation part of the van build and get into creating a functional living space with custom furniture. 
We're super excited to get creative there. If you liked the video or found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.